everybody and welcome back. This is a much requested video and I have got somebody involved who knows firsthand exactly how to handle scars. This yes. is Katie Hill. Hello everyone. Um, we're going to do a video with her makeup routine as well but the reason Katie and I have known each other for a fairly long time. We yeah. were in TV about the same time but, but on we a never crossed, did no, we? BBC ITV. BBC yes. ITV. <gasps> um, you got paid more because they were adverts. <laughs> It's true, it's true, it's true. But what happened was Katie and I have known each other socially for a long time. And then last October, Katie had the most shocking accident. And it's hard shocking. to imagine now because Katie looks so flawless. But Katie slid into my DMs and basically said, help, I don't know what to do. Oh. You take over. So, um, wow, I have been on quite a journey. So October last year, and um, should I tell the whole story or is it boring? No. Tell, okay. Tell a um, shortened version. What did you call it? Version. Fun, fun bum? What did you call it? I had fun up my bum. My friend's mum used to call it that. Like when we were being all a bit woo, it's fun up your bum. So it was half past seven one morning and school day and breakfasting at home and train my husband leaves at seven every day to get into London. And this morning he wasn't. He was leaving a little bit later. So I thought, right, I'm going to bring the mummy fun. So instead of going to the downstairs loo that was empty, I chose to chase my daughter, Kaya, who's 13, up the stairs to the upstairs loo, just kind of for yeah. foolishness. Because we want to be fun. Because we're fun. So we get into the lounge and I'm like, oh, Kaya, look over there. I think the cat's got a mouse. And then I race past her. I'm up the stairs. I'm killing myself laughing because I'm so clever that I outfoxed her in the lounge and I'm going to win the race. Tripped on the top step launched across the bathroom so fast. Now, I don't know whether this was the speed of it or whether I was half asleep, but I didn't get my hands out in time. And I landed with a hand each side of the loo <clears throat> and my head face planted the back of the seat. So mm -hmm. you know the lid where it's got round discs so it doesn't bang. Literally, it went into there and it was the most almighty crunch. And I, you know when you go cold when something like that happens, and I was like, okay, Kaya, I've just got to go downstairs and see daddy. And I put my hand there. I had no idea. There was blood on the toilet seat. Went downstairs, said to Trey, I think I might need an ambulance. And I took my hand away and I thought he was going to pass out. Bless the, it's the look on somebody's face, yeah. isn't there? I hadn't even seen it, but yeah. I knew it was awful. I know. So at this point, I'm going to warn you that we're gonna drop in some pictures. It, like, when you see me now, you'll be like, what could they possibly show? And the reason I need to drop in these pictures is because you would not believe, looking at Katie now, how shocking this was. Now, I didn't see the original picture, which we're gonna put in, warning. Uh, I actually saw the picture when she'd gone to the NHS hospital and had it stapled, stroke Frankenstein, as I like to call it. And she DM'd me and said, I don't know what help to do, me. Nadine, help. And you could tell at that point she was desperate. And I just went out of my way to try and help her as much as possible. Um, so, but what she did was she followed everything she was supposed to do to the letter. And so she's first hand experience in how to treat huge scars. This scar was huge on huge, her face. Huge, so, And they had to sew, so basically I went down tell, to the bone. Tell us, yeah, what happened. So, um, so the ambulance came and um, they weren't great, I'll be honest, and they were going off their shift and they were like, oh, you just need to go and get it glued. They didn't even look inside it. Thank God I was in my head thinking, you know what, if I've got to get anything done, I'm going to go somewhere where I know there's at least a plastics department. I'm not going to the local surgery where there's a nurse and with a glue gun. what's your local hospital? John Radcliffe okay, in Oxford. So really good hospital. Amazing if hospital. If you're watching this out of the UK, they were delicious. Oh, really good hospital. Oh, and they were lovely. And I went to A&E at the John Radcliffe. And it's amazing because there's always things that happen that just make you so grateful. So at that point, I was grateful to be alive. I truly wasn't thinking this is a life defining the star maker, moment as i like I to call wasn't, her because i was like i'm Bearing still in mind here. she's a radio tv presenter <laughs> life coach i mean i was like i'm still here and i was lying there being sewn up and there was another girl in the ward who was having a terrible asthma attack and they were having to put a tube down and listening to her beg her mum for it not to happen i was sobbing and the sweet man sewing me up i think he thought i was sobbing because i was devastated at my face and i was just sobbing for this sweet girl and her mum and it's like people go through amazing things like and i was just glad to still be there so the minute i knew it was down to the bone was <laughs> 
tray blessing my husband was standing next to me while it was being sewn up and I, I could tell he was a little bit ashen <laughs> and the guy had been sewing for about half an hour and then he went and I thought oh, he must be done I was kind of aware of him casting off kind of mm. um which back, I remember from sewing at school, school. <laughs> yeah. sewing lessons at school could you do blanket stitches yes. please <laughs> and then uh, and then he said oh I'm going to start the outside now and I was like what Whoa. and he'd spent about half an hour so I'd gone right to the bone very clean cut um, and he's you wouldn't so think that a rubber isn't it amazing toilet well it's kind of plastic it's super hard and yeah. it's the force of it that's your whole body weight yeah at speed on it at speed because yeah. I'm very fast anyway so so he sewed me all up and everything and I literally had as you'll see black I'm Frankenstein I'm dropping the picture now of stitches stitched up and this is the picture that Katie sent to me saying help I don't know what to do help. and genuinely at that point I thought one, I thought, with all due respect to the Shit. <laughs> man that did it, was he blind, <laughs> uh, sewing up, uh, but also what can we do in the long term? And I was about to go in for a shoulder operation and I'd done all the research on how to avoid scarring. So we then literally started keeping in touch about what she should do. So what advice did they give you? So when I left the hospital, I had an eye cream, which... Um, this is the thing with scars, is that there's no definitive information out there, which you'll know if you have a scar, which is why so many people have reached out to me. Number one with a head injury. Follow Katie on Instagram at oh, yeah. I'm, I-M-K-A-T-Y-H-I-L-L, because she's been there, seen it, done it. I mean, honestly, hand on heart, short of a cosmetic surgeon or a dermatologist. <laughs> She's been there, seen it, done it. She knows everything about scars now. So, yeah. And she does genuinely answer all your questions. Yeah, I do. Because you know what? The minute I did it, the outpouring on social media that I got from phenomenal people who had lost relatives doing something similar. One woman was on a farm with her mum and a door swung open and hit her head and she died straight away. Like, head injuries are major. And... And I just felt so grateful that people were sharing their stories with me and so grateful that I was still here. Mm -hmm. um, and I... It put the scar into perspective, it did, didn't it? Because yeah. actually, and being a life coach, I'm pretty good at this stuff, but it was like a real moment for me and I could either have stayed in bed for the rest of my life feeling sorry for myself or I could have gone, this is going to serve as a reminder that I'm still here and that you freaking have to live your all out life because what are we doing if we're playing at this stupid Completely. thing? Completely, and can I just say at this point, although Katie has done her makeup, she's got absolutely no concealer on that scar. So that scar yeah. is as it is. We're filming this, uh, we're at sort of end of February, uh, beginning of March. So you're not actually that far out, are no. you? No, so it's really amazing what is possible given that I thought I was gonna have a Frankenstein October, scar. November, December, January, February. I'm not good at maths. So so Four straight away months. they gave me when I left the hospital an eye cream okay. which was to keep it it's really so it'll emollient be a, it'll be a, um, an emollient hyaluronic acid yeah. just to keep it moist and so, that's the secret with scars and here was the weird thing though this is how much knowledge there isn't on scars when that tube ran out I went to my local pharmacy and said I need to get another tube of this and the guy in there was like like I was trying to get coke or something. He was like, no. You know when they treat you like yeah. oh, you're yeah. dodgy? And I was like, no, no, this but look. I was... <laughs> totally, totally. Just for the record, I've never done coke. I'm just putting that out there in case someone thinks that was a weird reference. Anyway, so I was like, no, no, I was given this in the hospital for my scar. And he literally laughed in my face and went, they wouldn't have given you that. So the whole journey is quite lonely because also nobody what has a definitive... your GP you were told to dry it out yes I uh, day three which will drop in for you um I blew up like Trey called me uh punks a tawny Phil did you remember that <laughs> <Dog Day? laughs> it was amazing and I and my eyes were like this um so that was a good day that was a shocker of a day and the gp told you to dry your scar dry your out. scar out which is the worst thing well, because you growing do. up if you had a scar on your arm or your leg yeah they would just go open well, it to the air scab wouldn't let you? the air yeah oh, yeah gross. exactly whereas modern wound healing technique is the exact opposite and the idea is you keep as much moisture in it as possible yeah hence the fact we're going to talk about everything that katie actually did so even a gp 
doesn't know what to but do they to don't, minimise costs. Because you can't do specialists in everything. They're too busy you? saving lives. Yeah, right? totally. So it has been quite a journey because there's nothing really when you Google it. So I decided early on, I'm going to find out everything I can. I'm very much about healing from the inside out as well, rather than just topically. So here I've got some of the stuff that's I think worked for me. Okay. So probably yes. 60 stitches inside yeah but eight externally external which How stayed in for a week okay right they were in for a week and then i had them removed at the surgery at which point i was just applying the eye cream until it healed Okay. So until so there was no it, broken skin. Yeah, so how long did the skin take? So that was probably us? about two weeks. Okay. And at this point, you hadn't used any silicon tape. No. Nothing. Okay. Even though, so how how long after did I tell you to start getting some silicon tape? <sighs> so you told me to use that when I went to. So I went to see a specialist. I went right. to see. One week in, I just had the the stitches out, and I went to see a specialist in London, who I shan't name. Um, but obviously it was massively vulnerable because I had a smashed face and they recommended about four and a half thousand pounds worth of laser treatment and my gut was I don't have four and a half thousand pounds to spend on my face I truly don't because anyone who is a busy working adult parent will know the four and a half grand is a family holiday. But I'm that, never going to spend that on my face. That is a vulnerable... You're at a vulnerable time there. Yeah. Where it couldn't have looked worse. Couldn't have you looked look, worse. It looked like Frankenstein. I mean, I'm surprised point. I didn't sell a child to be able to afford four and a half grand's worth of laser. But I was honestly mindful at the time of the fact that I'd had a massive outpouring from people following my journey. And I wanted to see what was possible without shelling out four and a half grand that I don't have. And I didn't want to turn around and go, hey, you know, Jean in Milton Keynes. Have four um, and a half thousand pounds worth of Yes, that. I wanted to say, no, people don't have this kind of money. I don't have this kind of money to spend on my face. Let's see what's possible who, without that. Who advised you to start massaging it? Online, I found yeah. it. So I found online that basically what you're trying to do is avoid um, a, a build-up of scar tissue underneath the scar. Um, so to keep it flat, what you can do is massage it. So basically, I went to see this um, specialist. Specialist. I decided, no thanks to your four and a half grand, but thanks all the same. Did he give you any other advice at all? No. <sighs> I know. Thanks. Um, and um, he, so I kind of went home from that think, feeling really like I want to fight this head on. So I thought, right, I'm going to do everything internally that I can do for starters. So what I did was um, I've taken these skin supplements forever and a day, Lumity. So this is Lumity. Morning and evening, three of these. And I thought, do you know what? If it's for skin, it's not going to hurt. No. So I made sure that I took these every single day. Um, I also did some research about vitamin C, which is phenomenal for healing. Um, and there's a liposomal vitamin C, which I started taking. That's uh, Altriant. Altriant, which I think is helping. And then I thought this as an example of collagen. Yeah. I'm not working with anybody, but um, collagen, I figured that's got to help, right? Listen, it's not going to hurt, do any harm. Exactly. So I started using And that. also it depends how healthy your diet is. You yeah. strike me as being a pretty healthy person, but healthy. a lot of women don't have enough protein in their yes. diet. And I'm you vegetarian. Do need... So, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> so you do need lean protein and you can get animal protein um, and vegetable protein, both of which work well, amino acids, but you need zinc and vitamin C to form new collagen and that's what your skin needed. What she said. Yeah. I just thought, you know what, vitamin C and collagen, it's not going to hurt. I also make my own ginger tea out of root ginger. And ginger's anti-inflammatory. Yes, and I figured that was going to help the whole holistic... I just don't think healing. there's anything bad you can do. Uh, at what point did you buy the silicon tape and how did you end up with Keely Coat? Because somebody so, recommended it Somebody to recommended it to me. Okay. Uh, somebody said you need silicon in your life because it keeps the wound moist. Okay. And so I bought this. Now, for me silicon gel doesn't work because of where my scar is a woman doesn't want a however many inches scar on her forehead plus greasy hair from silicon gel that's not working for anybody and i agree with you okay so i've got two things here this is keely coat and then there's another one called heal gel and heal gel is a silicon based gel that was created by cosmetic surgeons and i think they both work the problem is compliance they it it silicon doesn't stay on it, it just sort of moves and it's yeah. a bit 
greasy and, yeah. and I think if you've got a flexible space like here or here or here or maybe somewhere on your body but my advice would always be get tape because yes. well, you told me about me tape. your tape because your tape's Darling. brilliant this is so good <laughs> get a she's found the best tape so ever I lick people say what make is it I have no idea I just buy it on Amazon so it and comes what do you Google? in strips you Google silicon tape, scar tape, scar tape. I and don't so, even think scar. See, mine's actually better than yours. Okay, no. So this comes in a big roll. Okay. And I cut it up because it's exactly the shape of the tiny cuts I've got on my oh, shoulder. Oh, that's so clever. So that cape came but on see, a huge roll. see, for my roll. skin, that's a better colour match than yours. Is too pink for me. Mine isn't is it? a bit pink, isn't it? But this stuff. Let me show um, you. So it comes off the bat like that. Yeah. And it's basically like a sticky plaster, but tell you, I tell you what, look. Look at us. Once it's on, it just stays in place. It's amazing. So mine, I've now taken to cutting as slim as I can because then it's covering less of my forehead. What's interesting is people see this on my face and think I'm trying to cover my scar. It's like, no, 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 I wear this stuff 22 hours a day because it's keeping my scar flat and moist and that's the only thing silicon does silicon is a completely inert large molecule it forms a layer over the top of the scar and the opposite to the olden days when we were growing up let the air get to it what it does is it essentially go on go back in and show them that close so what it does is it absolutely just sits on the surface of the skin and it means that no water can leave the skin at all so it keeps the wound shut and tight the water Transepidermal water loss can't happen and the skin can hydrate and they've now realized that that will prevent hypertrophic scarring and redness in scarring so it basically speeds healing and you're supposed to wear them for up to a year yes 22 hours a day look out to a someone year. has a new fashion accessory <laughs> and this says silicon That's gel sheet for scar medical level prevention of scar hyperplasia softening and smoothing of the scar reduces pigmentation improves the scar appearance it's comfortable and soft and honestly, hand on heart, when you first turned up this morning, I could barely see it. No. I mean, my scar looks better without it, I'll be honest, because this looks like you're trying to cover it, and people go, what's that Just like a little bit face? of a plaster, that's yeah. all. People assume I've had work done. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a weird oh, place to have a scar. The best place to go, Harvey Nichols. So I'll tell you about Sarah Bannon in a minute. That's actually quite sticky, mine. But when I go to Harvey Nichols, it, I've never felt more at home, because everyone has got scars there. <laughs> Everyone's got plasters and no one just bats an eyelid. So anyway, I'm going to rewind because I um, read about Shazam uh, massaging a scar. And so I was looking at what to use to massage it with because you're basically trying to prevent the scar tissue breaking up and you're trying to keep it plump so that the blood's going to it and there's collagen associated with that kind of thing. So I wanted to find an amazing oil that I could use for massaging my scar. Oil is my choice, Nadine doesn't like it. So, no, I would use oil to massage a scar. And I, in oh, fact, you? Um, the one I would probably quite like is the um, the Lumity one. Yes, Lumity is amazing. So but you're using a fractionated coconut, coconut oil. oil. Yes. And what's interesting about coconut oil is coconut oil is, it doesn't get absorbed by the skin. It's an emollient mm. and it's an occlusive. So it basically it? sits on the surface of the skin. What? Emollient. Emollient, yeah. Oh, I always say emollient. See, that's so why I'm not a beauty emollient. vlogger. Um, but uh, the coconut oil, so basically, it, because it's fractionated, it's liquid. So it's slightly more emollient and less occlusive. But coconut oil itself is more of a wax than an oil. It sits on the surface of the skin. So it's essentially doing pretty much the same as that. Oh, it's blue! Yeah. So that's this magic. So this one is called Yarrow Palm, which is yarrow and pomegranate cold pressed oil. Look at the colour of it. When I go to bed at night, I cover my face in this. Put a drop on the back of my hair. <gasps> it's dreamy. So when I first did this, I was massaging it just with that one, which is spectacularly healing. Nadine doesn't think so, but I do. No, <laughs> I don't believe in the power of essential oils. <laughs> This is why this is so good. But that is a lovely, Look hydrating, oh. lightweight oil. I so get I why you like night it. night oil. I get why you like it. Well, you know I'm a slippery salamander. Yeah, and I you love are it. a slippery now salamander. Now this, I do. But I, if I was you, I would use rosehip because it's got, you see, I look like I'm just kind of zoning out now. Now what's amazing is this oil, because I've used it since the beginning, the smell of the myrrh and the frankincense, this to me is the smell of healing. Like this is like a really trusting Oh, so it doesn't take really you back trusting to a, It doesn't kind make of, it super red. Yeah. Because I think it's grabbing all the. I also. Because I think it's irritating. Yeah. 
I think it's I keeping think that's it a sign veg. of irritation. Look. Mm. So there's that, which I do every morning for 10 minutes. And whether you Before like oil or on. don't like oil, whether you like essential oils or don't like essential oils, no judgment, go on your journey. For me, the oils, I totally get the fractionated coconut oil makes complete sense. For me, probably my choice of oils would be uh, squalene or rosehip oil. Like argon oil. Any of those oils, yeah. really. Any that's Just quite emollient and quietness yes. of it. Exactly. Or you could use a cream. Now, this got recommended to me. It's called Alhydrin, which has been phenomenal in burns. I wish I'd known it when I threw green tea over myself three years ago. Um, amazing for burn scars. I use it occasionally on this one here. I haven't heard of this one. It makes my scar less red but it makes me also panic because suddenly I see a silver line of my scar and I go, oh no, don't let it be finished. Don't let that be what I'm left with, which it may well be. But this is amazing. It's about 70 quid for a tube like that. No, it's But it's aloe. not four and a half grand of laser treatment, is it? So this is aloe, water, triglycerides. You can try it. I shall leave it with you. You can let me no, know what you think. No, keep it. But it's... What the and then main thing, oil. The main a load thing of with scars oil is to moisturise them, wouldn't you agree? And the tape and is vitamin. phenomenal to keep it. Yeah. To keep it, um, you know, when you were a kid and you would leave it and then mm. it kind of goes lumpy. And then so you've got the scab. The whole thing is avoiding this go lumpy. Oh my gosh, the other thing that I've done, talking about Harvey Nichols, Sarah Braddon, okay. I have to mention. There's this woman at Harvey Nichols. Talk about the Botox. And Botox. Harvey Nichols, Sarah Braddon is the most incredible woman. So she does facial acupuncture and she puts all these needles in, doesn't hurt. It doesn't go in the scar, it goes all around, it's all around. the scar. It's very cool. But what she is going to start doing is microneedling. Yes. And when, when you're it's ready, slightly less red. When you're ready for microneedling, you know you can do it at home as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. But frankly, Sarah's got a very big sumptuous duvet. <laughs> And honestly, no, but I you're going to have to do it two or three times Regularly. a week. Yeah. When I went to first see her, so she does all the acupuncture. She puts needles in my ears. She's got classical music going. You've got a red light on you. She does reflexology and she does Reiki. And I honestly could have burst into tears because as a woman, you just keep going for everybody else. And it was the first time in three months that I felt like somebody else was looking after me. You were being treated as a person and yeah. not as a scar. And she's, I could literally, if I could eat a human, it would probably be her. She's so lovely. I've only seen her twice, but every time I go, it's flatter. So some people go to her for anti-aging, like, because your face just glows afterwards. Yeah, because she she's does, very holistic. She does um, facial acupuncture, That's which is almost point. like dry needling as well. Yeah. So even if you don't believe in acupuncture, I don't. Even if you don't believe in Reiki. We're like chalk and cheese. Even if you don't believe in essential oils. I do believe the actual act of puncturing the skin will make you grow new collagen. Because it is the same as my But there's not that many needles though. For, to there's build new collagen. There. That bit there is. Yeah. But you come out literally glowing. It's amazing. So Sarah Braddon at Harvey Nichols. Totally worth a visit. Um, also, early doors, somebody said to me, get Botox in your forehead. Now, this is amazing. So yeah. tell me about this. So, actually, the laser surgeon, oh, did as he? well as trying to take all my money, said... <laughs> Tarana take all his doctor Tarana take all his money was his name <laughs> um so he said have you thought about botoxing the area because had you ever had botox stopped. before yeah i tried it okay. in the past but a tiny bit tiny. i never think of you as having a frozen no because i don't want that look yeah. but i've occasionally gone and gone could you make me look a little bit less tired um and I hadn't had it for ages, and he said um, that Botox would really help. So the only place I've ever been for Botox has been courthouse. So I went okay, in. Okay, so the courthouse. Who's so your I need to go again. Look clinic? how much movement. Dr. Miriam, okay. she's amazing. I don't think you've got a lot of movement. I think it looks really good. Um, well, it needs redoing. And then, I don't does she do the there, Botox just in a normal way or in a specific way around the scar? So when I had it done for the scarring, I actually had it done by Laser Doc. And okay. he literally went right around the scar because he said, what you're trying to do is stop the skin moving with, all, okay. with your face, which is quite expressive. Um, now, bearing in mind, you I had damaged the muscular layers as well. Yeah. <laughs> bearing in mind, you, you, you damaged the yes. muscular layers as well. So basically, he's trying to allow the muscles to hit, kneel, 
Kneel and knit. Kneel and heel. Heel yes. and knit together as well. Okay. And so it was interesting because um, nobody had ever heard of the Botox for scarring. And then last week I actually went to a scar place in Bristol and the guy said, yeah, there was a huge research paper done a couple of years ago. Just for this area? Botox for scarring. Now that I don't know. I think it would be relevant in an area of movement. Yeah. So your shoulder, no. No, because but there's here, no skin moving. Yeah. Or here. Yeah. Uh, tell us the uh, name of the specialist scar place that you, again, tracked down all on your own. Yeah, so I went online. The reason that I loved the look of this place was because it was the only place I found that looks after people's mental health following a scar, which I'm aware I'm spectacularly lucky because of my beliefs, because of my... Um, training training and I have turned it into a huge life affirming positive but I can see how you could go down a spiral and this place I was like because ah! when I googled it they they offer psychological support they offer all the kind of scar care you could need you're going to end up working so there. it's you know cool that, don't you? I freaking love the place honestly um and I paid to go there by the way it wasn't a freebie it was 150 pounds 150 pound for an hour consultation I can't even remember the name of the doctor that's terrible you can um, text it to me and I'll put the details yes, in here yes that's his name there and um <laughs> he was like a knight in shining armor and actually if I'd thought about it and known about that place on week one I would have gone okay because had any scar revision been necessary redoing the scar if they didn't think it was well done enough getting a long-term plan you literally just feel like you want someone to be in charge of what's happening with you and it's scary when as a non-medical expert you feel like you're in charge but also you're being told of different what's happening by different and you're being told different things so because the truth is people don't know yes that much about scars yeah they don't so the, the place is called it's in bristol it's the scar team in Bristol, it's in Clifton in Bristol. Okay. And, um, and is it part of an NHS or a I private? think it's part of Nuffield Health. So they okay. are NHS, aren't they? But it's a private arm okay. of the NHS. And what I loved about and it was the And do they do all the scars, not just facial everything. scars, body scars, everything. everything? They do everything you could possibly need doing to a scar. They do makeup, they do, you know, consultations. So they do camouflage, they everything. do silicon scar taping. Do they offer yeah. you any skin? Microneedling they can do. Perfect, okay. Um, they probably offer lasers as well, yeah. actually. Don't and they? I basically went to see him because I loved what they were doing and I said to him, look, I've been uh, recommended four and a half grand's worth of laser. Um, on the flip side, the NHS have told me to do nothing to it for a year. And I just wanted to be sure that I was doing the right thing. I wanted a third opinion that might sit somewhere between the two. And what did he say? He said I was a grade A student. Yeah, you he are. said I'd done everything that I was supposed to do. Um, had he seen it early doors, he might have redone part of it. The top, the top where bit, it was most open, which is a which bit is more probably gappy. the place of in there. import. It's um, really not bad at all. But um, and if ever I wanted it, there's a thing they can do where they make it more of a zigzaggy scar. Yes. So it's not such a line. Yes. Um, a massive thing he said, if you have a scar, just go there. Because he said, there's this taping that you can do, which potentially I should have done early it's doors. all the butterflies. Yes. Push it back together. Yes, which nobody told me about. So I didn't do that. But he would have you tape it quite early on. Is it the only place in the UK? Or do you know if there's a series of them? No. There so are other Nuffield Health. I'm pretty sure that's where the scar team is based for the UK. You don't know if they do um, Skype kind of FaceTime calls or anything like I that? I don't, I'm sure they would be open to it, but I'm sure they'd be open to it. I mean, I got the train down and it was like really not that long to Bristol. Okay. Nice little trip to Clifton. Um, to but I Clifton. just came away, Dr. Pleat, I feel like he's Dr. Pleat. I came away so reassured that an expert had spent all that time with me who wasn't trying to push Flog expensive you something. treatments who had a, a real overall view of scar care rather than pushing the expensive machine that he's mm -hmm. just bought and has to justify yeah so i felt brilliant about life coming back from there because it's like i'm doing all the right things you know going forward if i do want to do anything further i can um but crucially for me it was the psychological side of things for people that resonated because I was like, the outpouring that I've had on my social media was out, just people aren't supported and people are carrying so much with their scars. And I'll be honest for me, there's, 
obviously I work in telly, uh, less so these days, but, um, and I've got a, a scar on my forehead. Um, and whilst I will do everything I can to minimize that, I'm also very aware that being in the public eye, there is a potential place for me to stand and go, I've got a scar and it's fine. And when I'm on the red carpet, I don't cover it because I think it's powerful. It's mm. like, you know what, we've all got scars and we all have to get on with life, don't we? And I'm still here. And and honestly, that has been my takeaway from the whole thing. And I actually think scars are quite badass. <laughs> I do really you do. Yours has turned into a particularly badass scar, <laughs> yes. I must admit, but then I think you were born a badass. <laughs> Finally, yes. uh, moving forward now yeah. bearing in mind we're end of february here beginning of march what happens when the sun comes out so it's got to stay protected from the sun now i don't know how much spf there is in my um silicon tape so um i'm going to do keep wearing, wearing spf every day every day but not on my scar no okay. so i put spf here right up to the scar and all over my face i wear spf 50 every day so i think when the summer comes i shall wear my silicon tape i might just put a plaster over the top which and i know would this? keep the sun out so this is a stick that i got which is spf 50 it's called photo ultra istin stick and brush and basically it's a cover-up Concealer. Um, concealer with SPF but what I love about it is it's really thick so actually do you I, actually wear it on the scar yeah I go right down the middle because I know then that it's that's protected actually, I don't think that that's that thick or horrible I think so I literally go straight down the bad boy blend that's it a good in a bit match for you as it's well pretty good isn't it I mean there was only one option so luckily really? me, yeah it's very interesting actually, I was saying this earlier on, so what do people of colour do if all the SPFs and the silicon star, car, star, silicon scar tapes are all pale pink? They must be different colours. Well, they've only just got people of colour, black skin tone, oh, Asian yeah, skin true. tone plasters, it's shocking. So then that does that and you really you have a look? can't see it that much, no, you can really. you? I want to see Katie, you really have been an A-star student. Do you want to get a prize? I mean, I'd like you not to use your essential oils, but I, we're literally picking holes here. These have kept my soul on fire. Literally. No, I think Maybe they smell it's amazing. Smell. Maybe it's that in itself is enough. Do you know what? I put a sticker on this that says arise because there's a quote that I live by. I was thinking of that earlier on, going, is, like, that is that No. <laughs> So there's this amazing quote that I found, which was quite poignant for me with my scar. And it said, it's okay to fall down and lose your sparkle, just so long as when you get back up, you rise as the whole damn fire. Oh, it makes me want to cry. I literally do feel like that because it's like, you know what? Everyone goes through shit and everyone has scars and things that they have to go through. And you either let it define you and go to bed and never get up again or you use it to power you into something amazing and that's why i wanted to have you on because one isn't she amazing two follow her but three she really does know how to deal with scars and essentially what she's done is everything that you could have done because she fell into a we love our NHS. My God, thank heavens for our NHS. They're amazing. But you fall into an NHS. Their job is to save lives. Their jobs yeah. aren't to make mm. you beautiful. And yet somehow out of that, she's navigated her way through all this mis misinformation to become this sort of grade A perfect scar healing person. And that's why I wanted to get you on. Yay! And I thank you for doing this because there's so many people who are following my journey and who have been saying to me, tell do me video, what am I do doing? A video. And I really hope that's helpful because there's so little out there. There really, there really is. isn't. Okay, so um, what I will try and get her to do is uh, register with Google and answer the questions on YouTube. <laughs> but what she will definitely do is answer the questions below my video because we'll put in a little video picture on Instagram. So obviously you know me at Nadine Bagger. But more importantly, follow her. Yeah. She's Katie Hill at I'm, I am Katie with a Y, Hill, H I L L. She will answer all your questions and yeah. she'll DM them. If she'll, she'll end up like me, she'll end up getting DMs of weird rashes and scars, but she'll help you out as much as she can. Yeah. But I will put all the details of all the products she loves and that I've recommended below so that you'll also know you can click in and buy them. And you're but brilliant. please get in touch yeah. if you're feeling vulnerable because there really isn't support out there and if i can get through that and be a girl on the telly with that on her face girl on the red carpet without covering it up and also i'll put all the details of the um bristol scar nuffield scar yeah, clinic amazing. as well and dr pleat 
which we've just laughed about because we had to change memory cards. <laughs> Dr. Pleat, because she's got a pleat on her face. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Thank you, my darling. Hello, and, Katie Hill. She's amazing. And anything you want me to do, I mean, I'll quite happily get her back on and film again. She's a dream to film with because she's a proper <laughs> old school TV presenter. So she's a dream. No editing at all. One take, one done. We're a bit long now, aren't we? <laughs> but it's an important subject. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. But get in touch if you need support. Bye. Bye. Thank you.